Hello, Senpai Recap is here. Please consider subscribing and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you are always updated with our uploads. Asahi Akusaba was killed in an accident after saving a child from an oncoming car. He gets transported to another world. He is fascinated with this ice guy, just like the games he played. Since he doesn't need his handphone anymore, he sells it to get money enough to get him some decent gear. Then he goes to join a guild, and right after leaving town, he fights a wyvern. The wyvern starts to attack him. He checked her stats, which are low, and stone throwing is the only skill he's got. He calls out to her sister, Maya. Suddenly, she gets transported, and she takes down the wyvern in a single blow. Asahi wonders if this sister is an illusion, and Maya starts hugging him and all. Definitely, it's her. Maya has a brother complex. Maya then explains that she was devastated when Asahi got into an accident, and he isn't totally dead, but in a coma in the hospital. Then she heard him murmur about the ice sky and thought his spirit was there. She bangs her head on the wall until she dies, just to go there with him. As for why she is overpowered, she thinks it's her love for him. Asahi thinks his fun is over and it's time to get back. Only they don't know how. At the guild, Asahi is congratulated, as he ranks up tremendously. The ranking system is unique. Instead of a B, C, and D, it has rabbit class, knight class, and so forth. Asahi is up for ogre class, but he is also warned of the death penalty for falsifying ranks, pretending to be a stronger class when you're not. So he colludes with Maya to always make it look like he is super strong when she is the one doing the finishing. Then, after checking Maya's stats, Asahi thought it had nothing until he realized it was only so because her stats were way off the mark. Then there is this parade whereby the hero party is led by Siegfried, a dragon class who is tasked with destroying the demon lord. A jealous, washed-out hero speaks back about him and causes a minor nuisance. Everyone is scared, but everyone remembers Asahi as the only one who can stand up to him. They're chanting his name, so he makes a deal with Maya to stop this. Pretending he could crack open the ground, the ruffian gets scared and leaves. Everyone praises their hero. But soon, Asahi must make good on his promise and give what Maya wants. The next morning, while Maya frolics in the warmth of her brother's bed, Asahi goes down to the guild to see what quests he can take. Tanya is recommending really tough ones. After all, he is of the ogre class. He manages to give excuses to take on smaller ones, so this mushroom gathering should be a cinch. While doing so, he is attacked by a bear. All he can do is run. He thinks Maya comes to his rescue after the bear dies in one zap. He was saved by Kilmeria, and with other bears around, she easily killed them with a single strike. Then she faces off with the boss of this forest, Bear Kaiser. She killed the bear in one blow. She introduced herself, and Asahi learned she was one of the six generals serving the demon lord. And when she says she wants to find a man named Asahi to fight to the death after hearing how strong he is, Asahi wants to get the hell out of there. Too bad he dropped his class badge as Kilmeria realized who he was. He runs like hell until he bumps into Maya. Maya accuses Kilmeria of trying to take her brother's virginity. The two of them battle it out, but obviously, Maya is still stronger. Kilmeria can't believe she is defeated and wants to be killed. However, Asahi will not allow it since she saved him twice. Maya abides because he said so. To hide the fact he almost mistook Kilmeria for her, he will cook for her, and this sends Maya's urges all over him. Asahi is still weak and needs his sister's help to kill a goblin. He has to put up with her perversion. Thinking of the need to get stronger to at least fend for himself, Maya suggests attacking her to get some of her XP. However, he can't do that and risk hurting her. Then he tests out this new skill of teleporting to escape from her clutches, and it works. Well, he used up all of his MP, and now he's a sitting duck as she gets him once more. He heads to the guild, thinking he should find some party members. Tanya gives her opinion and tells of Baomong, which is the hero's party and has ideal members. Siegfried is the hero for offensive attacks. Mimosa has all the magic. Elvin Shulane covers long-distance attacks, and Gordon is the tank. However, she lets him in on a secret. Bamon almost got wiped out by a mysterious enemy. Later, Asahi stumbles into a drunkard being beaten up by punks. He doesn't want to get involved, but seeing they are going to kill him, Asahi jumps in as a diversion for him to escape. 
However, the drunkard beats them all up easily. Upon closer look, Asahi realizes he is Siegfried. As they talk, Siegfried explains they went to fight the demon lord, but got owned by a single enemy, and she didn't even lift a finger. That demoralized the party, and they disbanded soon after. Asahi thinks he gained valuable friendship, but Siegfried tells the horrifying truth. Mimosa loves getting drunk, Shulane is arrogant and looks down on others, while Gordon is too shy to even converse. But with Asahi still glad they were party members, Siegfried remembers he was once like him, an innocent kid who just wants to save the world. Maybe he needs to get back on his feet again. Returning to the guild, Tanya quickly needs Asahi's help since there are wyverns attacking on the outskirts. He will go back for the necessary preparations to get Maya, but time is of essence, so Tanya puts him on a carriage right away to fight the wyverns, but Kilmeria blasts them all the wyverns. She wants to see him again to return the guild badge he dropped. But more wyverns show up. This time, it is Maya who will destroy them. Kilmeria relishes fighting her again, but Maya ignores her like she never existed to tend to her brother. Kilmeria will not have this, so the girls start arguing pettily, and if Maya won't fight her, Kilmeria takes Asahi as a hostage. Bad move because she doesn't see the big sister coming and gets knocked down in an instant. As the ladies continue their quarrel, a wyvern attacks Asahi. They put aside their fight to go save him. Kilmeria wants to continue fighting Maya and once again kidnaps Asahi. However, he uses his teleportation to escape. Surprised and amused by this, Kilmeria will let this slide, and that will be enough for her today. Asahi notices the ladies don't really hate each other, but still thinks Maya is all he needs in his party. She misinterprets that in a pervy way and thinks it is his proposal to her. Asahi is sent to investigate a haunted house on the promise that he can have the house for free if he expels the troublesome ghost. Unable to drive away the overpowered Maya, the ghost resorts to possessing Maya to gain control of her power. Fearing for the rest of the world if Maya's power is used for evil, Asahi fearfully decides he must kill her or die trying. Luckily, Kilmeria appears, but since Asahi forbids her from damaging the house by fighting, she challenges the ghost to arm wrestling instead. Kilmeria loses, so Asahi resorts to yelling for Maya to return, as he misses her. Maya expels the ghost, purifies it, and forces it to pass on. She then gropes at Asahi gleefully, revealing she was never possessed. She just wanted to hear him say something loving to her which he did. They report their success and are granted ownership of the house. Asahi must once again take credit for Maya's victory, but as a result of defeating a ghost, even the holy clerics couldn't expel Tanya, who assigned him dozens of incomplete quests that all involved powerful ghosts or evil spirits. Tanya tells Asahi that a new dungeon is popping up due to some mysterious land altering natural disaster. Asahi's quest is to explore it and judge if it's safe for rookie adventurers to explore. Asahi takes the job, with Maya coming along. Asahi sets up so many traps, but Maya is always there to save. With an undead army, Asahi forbids her to use magic out of fear of collapsing everything and getting buried alive. Her martial arts are enough to kick ass. Then they see a few bear cubs and believe they are orphans of that bear kaiser. Opening this place up will make them lose their home. As they return, Maya, as usual, is being promiscuous, so Asahi has to tell her off. Then he gets hungry, so she rushes off. Soon, he is surrounded by monsters, but he manages to escape. In town, a cute girl calls him and wants his company. However, he senses danger and remains cautious. That girl is actually Kilmeria in disguise. After meeting the siblings, she is interested in human civilization. She wants him to show her around town. At the guild, Kilmeria makes Tanya jealous by clinging to Asahi and looking like his girlfriend. Just when Asahi thought he got on Tanya's good side. As they go to eat, Kilmeria walks off without paying, almost starting a fight with the owner. Luckily, Asahi will pay. On the way back, they meet Siegfried, but he gets scared upon seeing Kilmeria's evil aura and takes his leave. Back home, Kilmeria wants to play a prank on Maria by pretending to be his girlfriend. He agrees to see her reaction. When they enter, Maya instantly beats her up. She can tell that this imposter is Kilmeria. Maya has cooked a lot for him, but Asahi just ate. Kilmeria vanishes all the food in his stomach, so he gets to eat her cooking. Kilmeria wants to join in too, but Maya forbids her. 
She throws a tantrum like a kid, but thanks to Asahi's grace, she is allowed to stay. Sophie Peaceful was told by her mom about her destiny to meet the hero. She has been fascinated with this ever since. Meanwhile, Asahi almost gets owned by a monster. As usual, Maya takes care of it. Due to that little scratch on his arm, she wants to lick it to heal it. He manages to escape back to town, where he bumps into Sophie. Because of his kindness and humbleness, she thinks he is the hero before her rude party members call the Slowpoke to join them in their dungeon raiding. At the guild, Tanya tells Asahi of an emergency. Due to a newly discovered dungeon, many adventurers have flocked there. But because of the strong monsters, they returned. Except for one party. Asahi realizes it's Sophie's party. Better go that quick before she gets eaten by this carnivorous plant. It is Maya who defeats the plants, and Asahi saves her. But she only sees him and thinks he is truly the hero after checking the final checkmark that he is strong. Later, she goes to introduce herself to him, and she wants to join his party as his healer. Asahi thinks it's a good idea, but does he need to have Maya's permission? Fearing that she will beat up this cutie, surprisingly, Maya accepts her since she respects Asahi. Then those party members of hers come by to blame her for everything. She shows her true colors and scolds them for being useless. Then she wants Asahi to beat them up. It is then that he realizes she is trouble. Maya throws pepper smoke and then beats them up in a flash. Asahi is sad, as he thought she would be the modest and comforting type. Maya thinks she is already that for him. Soon, Tanya has Asahi take up this quest of collecting killer bee honey. Too bad Maya is busy fighting with Kilmeria over some green pepper. So Sophie invites herself to join him on this quest. But as she notices him sluggishly taking out the killer bees and not being the strong killer hero she thought, he comes up with an excuse. He can't fight thoughtlessly and destroy the ecosystem. Because of that, she brings back the entire swarm, including the queen, so he can kill them all more efficiently. Asahi protect her now that she is going to be killed. Suddenly, a huge log takes it out. Sophie agrees to take the honey back to the guild first. Asahi then realizes it was those sisters fighting all the way here, and that's what saved his ass. They go home together. The next day, Asahi goes to the guild, and he starts feeling guilty because Sophie has been waiting there the whole night for him. A flashback shows Maya protecting Asahi from a dog, despite the dog being quite docile. But even after that, Asahi wept because he felt he was powerless and couldn't protect Maya. Now we see Maya destroy a monster boss with her fist. So much so, other monsters are scared of this monster and run. There is a weak group of monsters that can't run, so Asahi thinks of killing them. However, they soon start some weird dancing. Suddenly, Asahi loves Maya. Maya would love to reciprocate this wish that has finally come true. But then Asahi knocks his head on the ground and the spell wears off. Asahi then realizes the monsters have some sort of confusion-inducing effect, so he tries to get rid of them. However, Maya stops him and wants the monsters to do the dance again. Each time Asahi turns into a loving boy, Maya gets excited, and her blast gives his head a good knock, reverting him back to normal. Maya forces the monsters to dance again, rinse and repeat, until one moment whereby Asahi says he wants to marry her. Maya is daydreaming about their wedding day until some demon lord general is going to pound them for revenge on his brethren. Surprisingly, Asahi goes up to protect Maya, despite being weak and scared. The general laughs, and before he can kill Asahi, Maya kills him off for laughing at her brother's bravery. But Asahi continues to cry as he blames himself for being weak. Maya says otherwise this time because he is kind for jumping in to protect others. He hopes to become strong enough to protect her. When Asahi visits the guild, it seems the other receptionists mention Tanya is on her day off and on a date. Asahi leaves and doesn't recognize this cutie as Tanya until she points it out. It turns out her date is accompanying her little brother, Roy. He is very shy around strangers. Roy likes hearing adventure stories. Once he hears Asahi's stories, he gets motivated. Then he suggests Asahi become their escort since they need to get something in the next town. He can't refuse after seeing Roy's innocent, begging eyes. Along the way, suddenly, a wyvern pops up. Asahi will defeat it. Seeing Roy is very scared and Tanya is protecting and reassuring him. Asahi does the best he can to protect. Only his weak-ass skills can do no jack. 
Then, as the wyvern is going to throw some breath, he throws a stone into its throat, causing it to choke and explode. Roy is still sad because he was useless. Asahi motivates him to work hard so he can become strong enough to protect Tanya one day. As they walk home, it seems the wyvern is still alive and going to make its kill. But it is snuffed out by Maya. She notes how Asahi has grown and will celebrate this with her cooking. Asahi reaches level 20 and unlocks light magic, though it only acts like a small torch. Their next quest is to capture the criminal Lomert and his gang, Dark Crisis. Maya and Kilmeria defeat the criminals, but Lomert challenges Asahi to a duel just as troublemaking Sophie arrives with townspeople eager to see Asahi fight. Fortunately, Asahi defeats Lomert, albeit with secret help from Maya. Elsewhere, noble adventurer Gloria Brigandine and her maid Kuan are suspicious of how fast Asahi reached ogre level. Meanwhile, Asahi has been tricked into an orc slaying quest without Maya, but is rescued by Gloria, who accuses Asahi of obtaining ogre rank fraudulently and being a fraud. A distant Maya sends an invisible attack at Gloria, making Asahi seem powerful. This backfires when, due to exposing her pants, Gloria demands an official duel in the arena. Kuan suspiciously watches Maya and Kilmeria, preventing them from helping. Asahi can only dodge Gloria, but she notices she is still wary of his powerful attack, though it really came from Maya. When she hesitates, he is able to blind her with light and disarm her. Gloria is furious. He won without attacking, but when Asahi claims he would never attack a woman, she develops a crush on him and flees in embarrassment. Asahi and Maya are on a quest to retrieve some flowers and Sophie wants to join them. She claims she is good at finding things. It turns out she was just guessing them. Feeling insecure with her, he hopes Maya can accompany her, but the girls go away and leave him alone, as the big sister would love to tell all about her little brother's embarrassing stories. Asahi is attacked by goblins, but is once again saved by Kilmeria. They then stumble upon a village in which the villagers' souls are being sucked by this necromancer, Malvacanth. Asahi fights him but he is going to have his soul sucked too. But Kilmeria comes to the rescue. Malvacanth recognizes Kilmeria, as he is one of the Demon Lord's generals. He thinks that with her here, they can go conquer the human cities. Asahi then denies Kilmeria is the one who kills indiscriminately because she is a kind person who has saved him many times. Malvacanth doesn't believe, but after hearing all that, Kilmeria kills off the necromancer. They reunite with Maya and Sophie, and it looks like they've found the flower. Back at the guild, Tanya congratulates Asahi for killing Malvacanth. He is this close to another promotion. Making his way out, Gloria is waiting for him, and she wants to date him. But being the panicky woman, she can't take this moment with Asahi alone and calls out for Kuan. Despite the many simulations they've practiced, Gloria still misses meeting the real deal. Kuan wants to tell the truth, but Gloria shuts her up. Asahi thinks they still suspect him of falsifying his rank, so Gloria goes with that and will ascertain this via a quest to find missing adventurers. In the woods, Kuan gives cliché romantic tropes on how to get close to him. Gloria, being the muscle head, exerts too much power. Then they find the missing adventurers, and the culprit is this treant. Gloria gets captured. However, realizing this exposes her and puts her in an embarrassing position, she powers up and cuts down the monster tree. It might be the worst date ever for Gloria, especially when Asahi saw her pants. Asahi gets a rude awakening with Kuan in his room. She is here because she needs his help. Following an argument with her father, Gloria enlists Kuan and Asahi's assistance in moving out of her father's mansion into her father's villa for nobles. This counts as running away. Butler Sebastian, convinced Asahi is to blame, hires dragon-level adventurer Tiga to beat up Asahi, but they are scared away by Maya. Panicky Gloria has served too many teas to Asahi as Kuan gives her ideas for having Asahi stay. One of them is forming a clan. Asahi then talks to Tanya about it, and Sophie hears it and wants to be part of it. Then Gloria sees them close together, gets jealous, and storms off. Kuan hints to Asahi that Gloria lacks friends and has nobody to depend on. She hopes he could be that person. But Asahi mentions that Kuan is already that dependable person. Back home. Asahi ponders his clan members, and Maya knows what is troubling him. So they talk about this clan issue. But as Asahi thinks Maya is the main character, she points out that he is the main one. 
She explains all the instances in which he saved the rest of the girls. Stats have nothing to do with it. And right now he is the strongest. So strong that he is crying. So while the clan is formed, soon they hit a problem. Asahi has been petrified by a basilisk. The rest desperately try to find ways to heal him. Maya is left alone with him as she tries to flirt with the statue, thinking it will heal him. All the while, unknowingly, Asahi is still conscious in this state. Eventually, when all options fail, the girls think of getting into a hot bath with him. Maya tries to sneakily kiss him as a cure. Luckily, Kilmeria just arrived to beat him. Learning what happened, Kilmeria uses her healing magic to easily break Asahi's spell. Maya then learns about Asahi's consciousness during his petrification and shows us her feminine blushing side. Asahi registers his clan, and as everyone suggests names, Maya then hands it in and makes it official. Super Asahi Legion Tanya sends Asahi to exterminate shark monsters infesting a popular beach resort. The girls, plus Tanya, all accompany him. But Gloria hunts the sharks in minutes, leaving the girls plenty of time to visit the beach and show Asahi their bikinis. Maya punishes Kilmeria for wearing a bikini made of strategically placed seashells. Kiwan announces a beach competition, with the winner getting Asahi to do one thing of their choosing, making Asahi nervous. After an intense contest of volleyball, capture the flag, and watermelon smashing, Maya wins. More sharks appear, led by the Sea King's greatest, ten monster sharks of various magical species. The girls defeat them, but Asahi and Maya are swept into the sea ending up on a deserted island. Alone for the first time in months, Asahi and Maya enjoy the temporary solitude and rekindle their sibling bond, but Maya soon returns to groping him. The Sea King himself appears, but is killed by Maya for interrupting her alone time with Asahi. The other girls appear, revealing they were there the whole time and heard every embarrassing thing Asahi said to Maya. Returning home from the sunny island, Asahi is disappointed to find the town deluged by rainstorms. It rained heavily last night. Maya and Kilmeria thought it was romantic enough to kiss Asahi, but he escapes, almost leaving them. By morning, they thought the town was slightly flooded. However, as Asahi gets attacked by the water, it turns out this is one big slime. Everyone evacuates to higher ground. Asahi stumbles into Tanya, who tells about the legendary slime who gets bigger after absorbing water. Since Roy is missing, Asahi offers to go find him. He warns Maya and Kilmeria not to do anything, as he knows they'll take down and burn everything along with the slime. While they obey his words, they know who the perpetrator is and go confront her. Asahi finds Roy as he is trapped after sheltering an injured girl. Asahi helps carry her to the safety of the cathedral. The perpetrator has also unleashed monsters from another dimension to attack the people. From Bamung to Siegfried, it's time for their moment of redemption. Asahi's side finds shelter at the cathedral as Sophie works overtime to heal others, even if she is on the verge of collapsing. But with Asahi here, this gives her the strength to continue. Then we see her ex-comrades crying like babies for being injured. She heals them and tells them to shut up because it's just plain demoralizing. Meanwhile, nobles living on higher grounds refuse to open their gates to the people. The only one left is Gloria's household. At first, Sebastian warns her about bringing in the chaos, but she doesn't care because it is her duty to help the people. Sebastian is happy with her growth and lets people in. Gloria and Kyuan then go to town to find Asahi. Meanwhile, Maya and Kilmeria confront the culprit. Kilmeria knows Giraligula, as she is one of the Demon Lord's generals. She thinks they can't best her. Her attacks have no effect on them, as Kilmeria sends her flying through several towers. That's not the worst part because Maya is going to finish her off with whatever big sis forever moves. As Gloria and Kyuan rendezvous with Asahi, he has Kyuan use her skills to find the core of the slime. She does so, and when they try to destroy it, it becomes defensive and moves high up into the air. Asahi then has Gloria toss him high up, and that's where he uses his level 2 stone throwing ability to destroy the core. As for Gurligula, she is thrown into a deep pit with all the slime. Soon, Asahi is promoted to Golem class. Back home, everyone celebrates Asahi's heroics, but this party is turning into a rowdy bash. Then the girls fight over whom Asahi should receive a kiss from. He escapes outside to see Maya sitting alone. Asahi thanks her for being his sister, 
Thank you for watching till the end, and please don't forget to subscribe. See you next time, and peace out.